Okay, eight reasons why your life sucks without React Native. First of all, uh, I think I'm the last speaker tonight. Um, I'm not sure if they saved the best or the worst for last, <laughs> but uh, you guys are about to find out. So, um, eight reasons why your life sucks without React Native, and the twelfth reason will blow your mind. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I think I made a mistake on my slides. Ah! Okay, <laughs> moving on. Okay, so what is the first reason why you want React Native in your life? Uh, well, if you want to build an iPhone and Android app. So picture this. You have an idea for the next billion dollar app, but you know how to code, but you're one person sitting in your mom's basement. And you only have three months before mom kicks you out. You're clearly limited on time and budget. What do you do? You can build a hybrid app. But you know hybrid really means an app that is neither here nor there. A mediocre monstrosity that is slow and awkward on all platforms. <laughs> so hybrid apps are no-go. What about a native app? Pros. Fast animations native APIs, native UI components, but there are some cons. Learning many languages, not that knowing a lot of languages is bad, it's just a big barrier, you know, uh, entry barrier. There's also mountains of code to manage, you know, between all the different, uh, you know, all the code that you have to maintain. Um, and that also leads to a longer time to market. So that's where React Native comes in. It solves for almost all the cons, which we're about to get into more detail about. Look at that. <laughs> React Native is here to save the day. So reason two, write code that compiles to native code for either iPhone or Android. So what is the expected amount of shared code between iPhone and Android? In the words of the Instagram engineering team, 85% of the code is shared between iPhone and Android. They actually have some components that they build out in the Instagram app that it's 99%. So that's it's pretty amazing. And we're talking about like a really piece, a really robust piece of software. And they're able to, you know, have such a, uh, you know, have so much shared code. And how much code can you expect to be shared between native apps and the web? So I would say about 45% <laughs> in my experience. I'm an authority on this. <laughs> The main differences are because of setup, bundling, navigation style, animation, and publishing. Uh, we're not going to get too much into these things, but yeah, you know, there are some different paradigms on the web that, you know, that don't translate into uh, the app uh, uh, market. Reason three, React Native works great side by side with native components written in Swift, Java, and Objective-C. If you need access to certain APIs not available in React Native, or you want to optimize some aspects of your application, it works really well. All you have to do is just import that native code into your render, pretty much, and there you, you have that native, you know, you have that native code working side by side with React Native. Reason four, and some developers might hate this reason, it's written in JavaScript, a language disliked by real developers. <laughs> JavaScript took over the browser then the server with Node, and now it's taking over the smartphone. <laughs> what will it take over next? Reason five, and this might be a bit obvious, if you already know React, React Native has a relatively quick learning curve. Components are written the same way, and many of your favorite modules like React Redux, Redux Thunk, Axios, etc., work out of the box with React Native. In the words of Bon Jovi, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> By already knowing React, you're halfway there. Yeah, he said those words. <laughs> uh, how about the differences? This table covers some of the main differences. First, React is a library, and React Native is a framework. When you start a new project with React, you will choose a bundler like Webpack and bundling modules. React Native comes with everything you need, and you probably won't need more stuff. All right, now I'm going to go into the live code portion of this talk. Um, I, I always find like live coding like interesting because it's kind of like watching NASCAR. 
uh, like, you know, the person could really mess up. So let's see what happens. Uh, let's do it. Okay, so here we have a component. Um, it's written in React um, type of language. So we have divs and images and Ps. Um, I'll go over some of the differences, and I'm going to make this little emulation over here actually run. And I'm just trying to show you the difference between React and React Native. So, first of all, we have these divs over here. Um, we don't use divs in React Native. We don't think they're cool, so we call them views. So we, put, we change that to a view. Um, class name, we don't have classes. Instead, we're going to be using styles. So we're going to change all those class names uh, to style. And then it's a uh, styles.instructor. I mean, you can really call it whatever you want, but you'll see why in a second why I did that. Then, um, let's fix this up over here. Uh, all right, that looks good. Then we have uh, this image over here. We don't do image SRC. Instead, we have this image source like that. It has a URI. And it needs a, a width or a height in order for it to be able to uh, render and show. Then we're going to change these p tags to uh, text tags. Um, and it's looking pretty good. Oh, also we're going to change this input to text input. So instead of like an input field, we do text input. Um, then I'm going to uncomment this out. This is how you do like a style sheet in React Native. Um, it's stylesheet.create. You could call it whatever you want. And um, you write your styles in here. I'm not going to get too much into styling. Dean spoke about Flex and uh, Flexbox, which is pretty interesting. But yeah, we don't use um, uh, Bootstrap. We use Flexbox for uh, that type of stuff. And then instead of React on render, we have uh, this app registry thing. Register component. Blow your mind. I don't know why I called it that. Um, okay, let's save it and let's see if it runs. Oh, look at that. It's running. Okay, so here's our image. Here's our uh, text and here's our little input over here. Um, some things that are pretty interesting are uh, if you click Command D, you have uh, remote JS debugging and you have like live reload. So remote, um, live reload is I could change anything to whatever I want. And I save it, and then it automatically changes that. That's pretty amazing when you're dealing with like a native app because there's a build like time that needs to happen, and they're doing some like really cool stuff to make it like have a really fast build, and then like render it over here, which is pretty cool. Um, and then, uh, yeah. So let's talk about the debugging for a second. So it's that good old-fashioned Chrome debugging. So you can see over here um, all these nice little errors that I have. And uh, this is like your regular from debugging. You could use it with your React Native app. Um, yeah, so that's that. Let's go back to the presentation. All right. So we just covered like reason six and seven, hot reload and Chrome debugging. Um, hot reload is that instant reload on save. Now the eighth and final reason why you need React in your life. There are great docs and help forums available. Facebook's React Native docs are so great, they even crack jokes in it. I think they even had to get rid of one of the jokes in it because uh, there were some issues with it. It was like offensive. Um, but yeah, but they're really trying. They're really trying to be funny and make it like enjoyable like for you to read um, their documentation, and it's actually really great. The tutorial is amazing to get started, and their docs are completely thorough. It's really good. Um, like React, there's also a huge amount of well-built, uh, pre-made modules available via NPM and GitHub. Um, I put together a second demo. Um, I hope no one gets like creeped out from it, but I, I scraped everybody's data <laughs> <laughs> from Gabe's great uh, um, spreadsheet. And then I got your images from GitHub. And um, I put together like a little contact app for the class. Um, and I'll show it to you in a second. So I'm using two modules, native base and React Native Communications. 
I'm not bragging when I say this. It took me about like 45 minutes to build this, just to show you like how quickly you can get started. Um, and yeah, we're gonna show it to you again. This is the sequel, everyone. <laughs> too live, too furious. Okay. So I'm not actually gonna hand code this one. So I'm just gonna copy it from this file over here. We'll call it class app. Okay. I'm gonna paste it in here. I'm gonna save it. <coughs> Uh, is it working? It looks like I have to refresh this one. Oh, there we go. It's up. So here's everybody in the class. Let's uh, check out Gabe's GitHub. <laughs> All right, there we go. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, I also have this on my phone. With it's running without being tethered to the computer. Um, and the call action and email action work over there. Um, there is no call and email action in the simulator over here. I'm also going to highlight some stuff over here, uh, you know, what I'm doing. So I have this class list of, you know, it's a JSON object, which I exported from uh, Google Sheets. And then uh, mapping over it, and I'm using these cards from Native Base. Native, I didn't do any, like, manual styling over here. Um, just very simple cards, um, and I put in, you know, the GitHub image, the, uh, all the other information. And then I'm using communications. Communications um, works with, like, the native um, APIs available on the phone. And uh, so you do communications like phone call. You put the student phone over here, um, and then uh, you could actually make a phone call. And what's so cool about this is it works in... Uh, iOS and it works in uh, in uh, what's it called in Android. So <laughs> I forgot the name of it. It's been so long since I had an Android phone. All right. So uh, anyone want to guess like how much shared code I have between Android and iPhone? Um, you said oh, 75 percent? Yeah, 75. No, it's actually 100 percent. Um, and it's a pretty basic app, but it's it's really cool. I wrote. Um, this code. I wrote it pretty quickly. It's 100% shared. Um, I even have an Android version available as well for you to look at. Apparently, you could do a call action from the computer here. So, what? Oh, I guess it's unsupported. <laughs> but you could do an, oh, look at that. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I almost goofed up over there. Uh, yeah. So, let's go back in. So here's some really great uh, resources. I'm going to go past this pretty uh, quickly, but I'm sure you guys are all going to review my video later tonight or tomorrow. Um, so you could just pause on this slide, and you could uh, manually type in all the, all the links into your browser, and you could read the documentation. Um, yeah, that's it. So thank you so much for your time. The demo is available on GitHub. Um, we're going to also put the slides up on GitHub, and please feel free to contact me via my email, or you could use my app and click the call button, <laughs> and you could contact me like that. And I really appreciate you guys uh, listening to what I have to say. It's not often that I get so much attention. Uh, so, thank you.